much coffee because again when you're doing sub what all right wait a minute here Terry 3G's must have some type of bionic hearing or something because nobody else can hear what he has to say in any of his videos. And this is going to show and prove what people hear compared to what I'm going to do with this video so you can hear it. Don't drink too much coffee because, again, when you're doing sub... Don't drink too much coffee because, again, when you're doing sub... Much better, but he still doesn't know his left from his right. During and whatnot, you definitely don't want to be messing around with messing around with the. Um... Come on, you could say it. Come on. Messing around with having the shakes like this. I mean, the shakes like this is not good for soldering. Wow, Terry, if you're having the shakes like that while soldering. Maybe you should cut down on your caffeine. Which for some reason... The soldering iron is kind of being a little flaky. I'm sorry, Terry. It's not the soldering iron that's being a little flake. It's the flake that is using the soldering iron. If you look at the tip of that soldering iron, it looks like it's never been cleaned. Hmm. I do feel the heat coming from it. What a dumbass. You know the expression when somebody would say, Hey, touch this. It's hot. And that other person would touch it. And then you'd laugh at them because they're dumb enough to touch it. Well, that's where this falls into place. Anybody else would have taken a piece of solder and hit the iron with it to check to see if the solder would melt and then clean the soldering gun on top of that too. The sigh of disgust. So, pulling them off, pulling them off by reheating the solder is probably your ideal situation. Just an ideal for your situation. Again, take our heated soldering iron. How do we know the soldering iron is hot? I do feel the heat coming from it. While well, you can see my soldering is not fender perfect or fender Mexico perfect, it's not that far off. Did he just say what I think he just said? That his soldering is not far off from what they did at Fender's factory? Soldering job isn't exactly super great, but also at the same time, I've seen a lot worse. I tell you, that camera he's using really sucks. Yeah, I have seen your worse, and that's the worst I've ever seen. We got two grounds and have been cut off so we need to very carefully reach over here come to our little trusty wire strippers and try to move up and off as much material without removing the wire as possible. Good amount there. Just drop it on your... Now, I normally would only use the trim wire, but in this instance, I'm just going to double down and make sure that 
I have two sources of ground, which can be both a good and a bad thing. This is being a real pain in the derriere to want to strip, but we want to strip enough wire off that when we match the wires together we're going to get a proper ground. So there we go. Trusky wire strippers. This is being a real pain in the derriere to want to strip. I think someone needs to take a crash course on how to strip wires. It shouldn't take nine times to strip two wires. You know, I can understand leaving a little extra wire for things, uh, especially if it's a small, tight place. And it helps to, like, if you want to reuse those pickups and something else, to have enough wire to reconnect those pickups onto another guitar or pickguard or whatever. But somebody's going to open this thing up, and you know how Terry is. We have a trade to announce. Yeah. They're going to look at this thing and say, what a fucking spaghetti mess. Just running it over just to make sure I got enough that's making contact with the actual air casing of the pot and the hole. See, when it works, it actually works. So we got our grounds connected to our ground. Congratulations, you finally got the guitar grounded to the pick guard. I could have went upstairs and made two sandwiches, grabbed a Coke out of the refrigerator, and came back downstairs in the basement by the time you finished that. What the fuck was that? I know I'm kind of a big guy too, but man, that fucking pooch has got its own zip code. Oh, I know what that is. That's an alien love child. Again, take our heated soldering iron. How do we know the soldering and iron is hot? I do feel the heat coming from it. <laughs> so, in this instance, being a bit ambidextrous is is a good thing. So Sure enough, I get the solder in place, and of course the thing moves. You know, it's kind of a good idea to tin your wires first before soldering. That's why you don't have problems like this. And throughout this whole soldering job, he has not once cleaned a tip off of the soldering iron at all. Oh, come on, Terry. I know in your so-called searches, you're cleaning the tip off of something. I know you know how to do it. Get it. 
move these down and into the pit guard. Make sure the cables aren't getting intertwined here as much. So, okay. We've now got this in place. Yeah, that kind of looks like something is wrong still. Something is pushing the pick guard up off the body, and if you tucked in all the wires, then uh, yeah, either one of those pots or some of your wiring or that five-way switch is not really sitting in there quite nicely and causing you a problem. And I bet you he just screwed it down and called it good because that's basically kind of what he said he was going to do. Well, it looks like Terry's getting a little thin on top. Maybe he should go over to his wish list and buy some of this uh, hair repair oil. So again, that was fun, and I hope you guys learned something. What not to do, and don't do it. Again, take our heated soldering iron. How do we know the soldering iron is hot? Do you feel the heat coming from it? 